Hello and welcome to Microchip Security Channel. Today we will show you how to implement secure authentication on Google Cloud IoT Core using the SAMD21 Cortex M0, the Wing 1500 Wi Fi, and the ATECC608A secure element for Microchip. The solution has been architected with a 32 bit microcontroller, a Wing 1500 Wi Fi, and a secure element to securely store the private key necessary for the authentication. The secure element will generate the private key inside the device, inside its secure boundary, and it will also generate the public key associated to it. That public key will be loaded into the Google Cloud IoT Core environment. When Google Cloud IoT Core issue an MQTT Connect uh, to the hardware, the 32-bit that is loaded with Crypto AuthLib library will generate, thanks to Crypto AuthLib library, a JWT token. Part of the token is hashed and presented to the secure element that will perform an ECDSA sign operation and create a signature passed back to the microcontroller the signature is then appended to the password location of the MQTT message and uh, communicated to Google IoT Core. Of course, the private key all along the way is continuously protected into the secure element, and CryptoAuthLib is the library that has the hardware abstraction layer and the microcontroller driver that allows communication between the controller and the secure element. As mentioned, the um, token inside the password location of the MQTT message is passed to Google IoT Core uh, with the transport layer, as simple as that. Google IoT Core that has the public key do an ACDSA verify of the signed token and acknowledge if the authentication is valid or not. Now it's time to go to microchip.com slash ATECC608A GCP IoT Core. Once you land on the page, click on Buy the Google IoT Core Hardware. The hardware you'll be using can be purchased from microchip.com slash purchase and you'll get the SAMD21, the Wing 1500, the socketed board of the ATEC608. I also buy the AT Expander bus expander board and that's the board in the middle and the two boards on the side are the ATM bus expanders to be able to accommodate the microbus port. That's where you'll buy the clickboard from microe.com, one of our partners, and you'll get the EMC1440 temp sensors as well as the EMC2301 motor control, both are from microchip, and those parts are populated on the two clickboards that you see here. Uh, to complete the demo, you'll have to go to amazon.com and buy the fan recommended right here. At the bottom of the previously visited page, you're going to go enter to a hardware to find the hardware and getting started. Click on the link and follow the steps. You will have to install at Mail Studio. You will have to clone the GitHub repo. You will have to install Python 3 and enter the following pip install command for the requirement text and of course install a terminal miniature. Now we're going to copy the URL and launch the GitHub app on our desktop. Once GitHub app is launched, we're going to clone the repo, choose the folder, go to URL and paste the URL to start the clone. The clone is now complete and we are ready to start the pip3 install for the requirement text installation. I'm going to go to the command line and enter the command line indicated, hit enter, all the requirements are installing. Now this is done we are going to switch to the hardware. Do not plug the socketed board yet, only the Wi-Fi. Now we're going to update the certificate. To update the certificate, you'll have to go to that project location and open that Mail Studio framework. You're going to File, New, Start a Project, an existing project, and search for Wing 1500 firmware. Click on SAMD21. Make sure the path is the desired path here. Click OK. The project is going to start. Accept the licensing agreement and the project is building.
now the project is built we are going back to the actual cloned repository under GCP search control A and select all the search and copy them then we are going to go back to the Wink 1500 firmware update folder go down the hierarchy to source firmware tools root search binary select everything delete and then paste the copied search that we got from the clone repo now the search are set up in the right re wink repository returning to the main wink 1500 repo we are going to go down the architecture and find the source folder Within the source folder, we'll look at several batch files. We'll select the SAMD21 update firmware and run it. The update runs, and if it passes, you'll have a nice pass at the end. Now, unplug the Wing 1500 and plug the Crypto Auth Explain Pro. Not the pin one is marked with a triangle on the board. Go back to Atmel Studio, open Project and go fetch within the clone Google repo under board the SAMD21 Atmel Studio project. Execute the code by building without debugging. The project is now built. Let's open command lines. Look at your directory for a file called config.py, which we are going to execute immediately. It will configure the 608 that you have on the socketed board. Go to cloud.google.com. First, let's take a look at the architecture. You have a device, a gateway, and Cloud IoT is the API we are going to enable, as well as a second API called PubSub. The a topic will subscribe to a PubSub, and that's how the message are going to be driven. So now, on cloud.google.com, what you will want to do is to create an account, enable the billing, and first look for the PubSub API that you need to enable. Click Enable, and then you're going to create a topic that you will call Events. You'll create the topic. Once the topic is created, what you will want to do is to create a subscription that we will call Example. Create the subscription to the topic wait a little bit and then go back to Atmel Studio look for config.c file in that file you will see six fields to change first or the SSID and the password of the hotspot you will be using that will have to change the four other fields are related to the Google project let's go back to the Google Cloud account and fetch the project ID copy and paste it from here to the actual config.c file and replace the corresponding field. Then we are going to change the region. To find the region, we have to go to IoT Core API and enable it. Once it's enabled, well, we have an error here. Let's try to understand what's happening here. I need to um, enable my billing which I didn't do at the beginning of the project and because I've used my free account for a long time they're asking me to upgrade which is what I'm going to do right now once the upgrade is approved I can enable the actual IoT Core API which will take a few seconds IoT Core is now enabled I'm going to create a registry Within the window, I'm going to call my register ID demo. The region here is what we want. We are going to select US Central 1. Let's remember that because that's what we're going to have to paste. I'm going to select the project ID right there and nothing else needs to be changed. Then I'm going back to Atmel Studio and change the region ID. Remember, we selected US Central one 
Let's switch back to the Google window and fetch the last information, which is the register ID called demo. We're going to delete the temporary field and replace it by the actual register ID. Then we will have the need for a device ID. First of all, let's create the IoT core. That's done. Let's go to IAM, which is where the policies are going to be set up. Click on service accounts and create a service account. Within that field, I'm going to call that demo class and create. Then I'm going to look for the pub sub within the list present here. I want editor rights and I'm going to click continue. Right there, we want to update the policy that was out of date. Click update. The policy is now updated. We're going to click continue. And now we'll be at the point where we want to create a key in a JSON format and create that key. That key is then downloaded to your download folder. Let's go and fetch the key here, which we'll want to place in the script folder and rename the key name by example. That file is that JSON formatted file. Then program the D21. Now you can plug both the Wink and the 608 to the Sun D21. You're gonna fetch the project again, build it. I'm launching TerraTerm here to look at the output. Now it's time to read out the public key. There are two ways to do it. Either you read the public key from something like TerraTerm or PuTTY after pressing the reset button of the SAMD21 board. Or the second option is to enter the command line python at pubkey.py and you will see on your TerraTerm window the public key appearing at the top and this is exactly what we are to going to go through now. Either you read from TerraTerm after pressing reset on the SAMD21 board at the top you can see the public key or you punch in the command line python at pubkey.py and you can also read out the public key that way. Then you're going to copy that public key to then go to your Google interface and paste that public key. You want to make sure you have an ECC P256 format, create, and then go back to your command line, look at the directory and enter python at underscore GUI.py. The GUI is going to start, well, not quite yet because we need credentials. The credential we want to enter are the following. We're gonna enter the same command and do uh, dash dash creds example dot JSON space example. Now we're going to hit enter and now the GUI is going to show up. You will see right into the GUI that the MQTT message are being posted. On the other window, I'm setting up TerraTerm to make sure the same thing. Well, we have applied that uh, same solution to multiple platform. We started with the SAM D21. We also have code for the SAM G55, the SAM E54 running the Google CSDK. We have an example for Raspberry Pi, but most impressively, we run the same security concept on 16 and 8 bit. And for more information, go to microchip.com slash ATC608A.